take some great pictures. Get your camera up in the air. Hi, I'm John Park. Flying your camera from a kite is one way to get pictures from up high. You could also use a weather balloon or even a rocket. But for flexibility and simplicity, nothing beats a pole-mounted radio control camera. With your camera on a pole like this, you can take some amazing photos. But there's no need to run out and buy an expensive rig. You can build one instead. So let's go to the workshop and get started. This is the pole we're gonna to use to mount our camera. It extends out to 24 feet. You can pick these up at any paint store. And most cameras can work with this system. You just need to have a tripod mounting hole and an accessible shutter switch. So there's two things that our system will need to do remotely. One, tilt it up and down to aim. And two, press the shutter. The way we'll do this is with a radio control system and a couple of servo motors. Now, when you plug in a regular motor, it just spins. But a servo motor will go to a precise location that you control. OK, let's build it. I'll make the rig using one inch and half by one inch wood that I picked up at the hobby store. You could also use aluminum or plastic. I built two frames, one to attach to the pole. And the second one, I attach the camera. Now, here's how it works. This inner frame will tilt up and down to aim. So the next thing I'll do is position my camera and servo inside the inner frame. First, I want to mark the tripod hole on my camera so I know where that is. Just take a little marker. OK, next I'm going to place this in the frame. And this little servo is going to act as my robotic finger to press the shutter. So I want to line that up right at the center of the button. OK, that looks good. So now I'm going to transfer that mark I made for the tripod onto the wood so I know where to drill. Looks good. It's time to go drill. I'll mount the camera to the frame using a 3 quarter inch bolt and a hose washer. I'll screw this in, and that'll tell me what height to place the servo. Also, by using this hose washer, I can adjust that height pretty finely. Okay, I'll get that in there, and now I'll place my servo. And what I'm looking for is just the right height where when I turn that arm, it's going to press the shutter button. That looks good right there. Okay, so now I'm going to set it down and mark for a couple of holes. And now I can go drill it. On a project like this, instead of measuring and drilling everything at the beginning, it's a good idea to put them together one piece at a time. OK, the camera and the shutter servo are ready to go. Now I have to mount this in the other frame. So I've left some space on one side to place the other servo that will tilt this. And I'm also going to use a bolt on the opposite side to act as a pivot point. And I'm going to mount these about an inch and a half up so that I can clear the bottom. All right, I'm going to remove the camera before this next step. I've made a couple of marks on my frame for the pivot points. So now I'm going to attach the servo to one of those. And for that, I'll use this little servo arm. These come in different shapes and sizes. I'm using this round one. And they just pop on and off like that. So I'll set that over the pivot point, And then I'm going to tack that in with a couple of nails. Now, when you're working with nails this small, I think it's a good idea to hold them with pliers and not just smash your fingers. So I'll set this in here and hammer that in. OK, once I finish that, I'm going to drill a hole on the other side of the frame so that I can mount this bolt for the pivot. There's the hole for the bolt. And I've also drilled a matching one in the outer frame. I've also mounted my second servo, so now I'll put it together. First, I'm going to move my camera out of the way a little bit and then line up the servo arm with the servo shaft and snap these together. All right. Now, I'm going to take this nylon bolt, place it through the inner frame, and I have a little spacer I'm going to put between the two frames and then set that bolt through the outer frame. There we go, like that. And then screw on this wing nut, not too tight because you've got to make sure it'll turn. OK, now I'll place my camera straight. And this is how it's going to work. The last piece of hardware I attached is this bracket from a brush holder 
and that's what I'm going to use to thread onto the pole. Now, the way this works, this is the receiver that's going to receive a signal from my transmitter. And I've got the servos plugged into that, as well as a battery pack. I've attached these with cable ties to the frame. Now, you may have to play around a little bit with the channels that these servos are plugged into so that you know which joystick will control which action. Okay, this antenna wire here can just hang down, and now I'm ready to try it out. So I'm going to turn on the camera and test tilt. Looks good. And let me take a picture. Great, it works. Now, this kind of a setup is a perfect addition to any maker's toolbox. For about 150 bucks, you can pick up a transmitter, receiver, battery pack, and a couple of servo motors. So I'm going to attach it to the pole now. And then we'll be ready to take this to the zoo and try it out. You'll need an assistant to handle the pole. And also make sure there's no power lines in the vicinity. All right, Jake, let's angle it over here for the orangutans. OK, let's see what we got. Oh, these are great. Even the giraffes had to look up. Oh, these look great. I'm John Park, and I'll see you next time on the Maker Workshop. Major funding for Make is provided by Geek Squad, 